Okay, in this video, we want to hit hardware and software one more time. Um, hardware would be any physical part of your computer. Your keyboard, your mouse, your monitor, your RAM card. Anything that you can touch is considered hardware. Um, software are the programs that actually run your computer. Okay, what's a program? Step-by-step -step instructions to tell the computer exactly what to do. Now, there's two kinds of software out there. There's system software, which represent your operating systems. An operating system, it comes with the computer when you buy it. Um, it allows you to use your computer to actually control how you interact with your computer. Like, you know, you want to change your something about your display screen, or you want to change something about your, your, um, um, your sound, your volume. Um, that's your system software. Your system software is the glue between you, the hardware you're using, the computer you're using, and the program you're using. So examples of system software would be Mac operating system, Mac OS. Right now we're in Mac OS 10, Windows 10, okay, and Linux. And we have that misspelled there, right? So let's fix that for you. Okay, these are all different examples of your system software that are out there for your desktops. Now there's other um, system software for your handheld devices. I'm not going to get into that now. Okay, so two kinds of software. There's your system software, your operating systems that come with your machine, and there's application software. That's the software you purchase that allows your computer to do specific tasks that you want it to do. Uh, maybe you want to play a game, so you buy a um, you buy a specific game. Maybe you want to run Photoshop, or maybe you want to do something with Microsoft Word. These are all software packages that you would purchase to give your computer some specific functionality that you need to use your computer in the way that you want to use it. So again, two kinds of software, system software and application software. Now I want to hit the term program again. A program, step-by-step -step instructions to tell the computer exactly what to do. You know, today we have hundreds of different programming languages. Um, in a matter of fact, at SLU, we teach Snap, we teach C++, we teach Java, we teach JavaScript. Uh, you may even come across a little bit of Python. Guys, there are hundreds of programming languages out there, but here's the deal. The computer only understands one language. Machine language, right? Machine language. That's the only thing the computer understands. And if we write code in, say, C++, we have to break that code down. The code that we write, we have to break that down into machine language so the computer can understand it. Okay, now what is machine language? Well, imagine if you walked in the room and I said, hey guys, we're not going to talk to each other anymore. Uh, we're just going to communicate by writing. And we only have two symbols to use, a zero and a one. Well, that's sort of how the computer works. It only uses two symbols, a zero or a one. And to be honest with you, it doesn't really use symbols. The zero is what we use to represent um, no electricity f flowing through a wire. And a one is the symbol we use to represent electricity flowing through a, a wire. So machine language is sort of like you and me communicating with just using zeros and ones. It's pretty tough. Now... Who is Grace Hopper? Back in the late 40s, we didn't have any programming languages. Okay, and computer scientists had to go inside the computer to literally um, change what the computer was doing by, um, by unscrewing or screwing in these different tubes that, into the computer. Um, Grace Hopper said, man, computers aren't doing much anything of any value. We need more people writing code to get the computer to do something worthwhile. Well, the problem is that more people couldn't write code by going inside a computer and changing vacuum tubes. Okay, so she said, why don't we let people write code close to the way they think? High-level programming languages like C++ or COBOL or Fortran or BASIC or what have you. She had this idea back in the late 40s that would allow programmers to write code not in zeros and ones, not in low level, but in higher level programming languages. 
Now, at this time, guys, in the late 40s, these programming languages didn't exist yet. But she came up with the idea of allowing people to write code closer to the way they think, not in zeros and ones. And that idea of writing code closer to the way people think led to um, the first programming language called Fortran. Fortran, that was about 1952. And then COBOL was invented. That's another programming language, 1956. By the way, it's still used today. And then BASIC was invented in 1964 to teach college kids how to program at Dartmouth University. Okay, and then you had C was invented uh, in the late 60s. And then C was changed and so forth until finally it became C++, probably in the 70s, I would imagine. Okay, and from this idea of Grace Hopper, from that idea today, we literally have hundreds of different programming languages to write, to allow programmers to write code much closer to the way they think. So anyway, Grace Hopper was a very important person. She was a Commodore in the Navy that came up with this idea back in the late 40s. And after she did that, things really took off in the, in the, uh, the computer world.